This mini lecture is about the drawing of hybrid orbital diagrams for molecules. So what you'll do is uh, you'll be given one of these eight on the test and I'm going to do a couple of examples of these just to show you how you go about doing it. So the first thing you want to do is draw a Lewis dot structure of the molecule that you're given. So for the first one I'll use CH2 and H and what you want to do is draw it out. We'll draw a C. We know the C is going to be connected to the N. We know the hydrogens. There's going to be two hydrogens on the C. We're going to have one hydrogen on the N. Now what this is going to do is it's going to leave the carbon one bond short and the nitrogen one bond short. So we can make a double bond here. And what that means is that the C is going to be sp2 and the nitrogen is also going to be sp2. Now what we can do is we can refer back to our templates that we were talking about earlier. And these are the templates for the three hybrids. We've got sp3, which looks like this, sp2, which looks like this, and sp, which looks like this. And these were all talked about in uh, earlier mini lectures. All right, let's go back to this one. We've got uh, two sp2 hybrids. So what that's going to do is it's going to be a, a C with a three sp2s attached to it and an untouched p orbital so it's sp2 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 and a p the n is going to be the same and we're actually going to join these together that's going to be a bond right there and we've got sp2 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 and a leftover p orbital. All right. The next thing we want to do is put in some valence electrons. Now we know that carbon, since it's in group four, is going to have four valence electrons. When we're choosing to put the electrons in the orbitals, we sort of treat it like Hund's rule. And since these are all fairly equal energy, we can put one electron in each of them. So we're going to put one, two, three, four. And there you go for the carbon. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, so we need to put five valence electrons in these. I'll stick one in here, one in here, one in here, and one in here. But now I have uh, five to put in. I've got a fifth one that needs to go somewhere. It can't go in here. This has already got two because it's a bond. It can't go in here. Because if you've got a p orbital, the p orbital is actually both lobes. The electron could be in either of these lobes. And since we know that these are going to bond together, and I'll show you how that happens in a minute, then the extra electron can't go in there. So the extra electron has to go in one of these sp2 hybrid orbitals. And that makes sense because an electron pair, this is a, a lone pair right here, is an object. And it needs to be part of uh, the hybrid orbital structure. The next thing we need to do is put some hydrogens in. And the hydrogens will attach to the hybrid orbitals that only have one electron in them. That's so that those can form a bond. Now whenever we're putting two electrons into the same bond, we, can, we know that the electrons will be opposite in spin. One will be up and one will be down, and that's the way we're going to set it up. The p orbitals have a very special bond between them. This bond is called a pi bond. And the bond itself is actually defined, if we have the C in the N here, we're going to have the bond between the C and the N here between the two sp2s that's called a sigma bond we're going to have that in the middle right here but above and below the plane of this bond we're going to have the pi bond and the pi bond is actually both of these and the electrons in this pi bond can be above and below the plane of the bond but this is just one bond right here this pi bond and You'll notice this is a double bond. You've got one bond from the sigma and one bond from the pi. So I'm going to label that pi like that. Now the only kind of 
pi bond you ever have to worry about is this arrangement here when you've got two p electrons sorry two p orbitals and they happen to be parallel they're going to bond in that way that's going to give us a pi bond every other bond we're going to deal with is going to be a sigma bond now this one doesn't get a bond because it's a non-bonding pair of electrons so there's no bond there we'll put a sigma here we'll put a sigma here so we should have one bond for every bond we see in the Lewis structure and we've got three sigmas plus one that's four sigmas and a pi so we've got sigma 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 and pi that's what we're going to see in our diagram so that's the completed diagram right there. Let me go ahead and show you what a pi orbital looks like. And we'll visit the orbitron. Right, there you go. That's a pi bond and its formation. As you can see, you've got two p orbitals, they're parallel, and the top and the bottom lobes join together, and that is just one ordinary garden variety pi bond right there. Now, if you took two p orbitals that weren't parallel and you joined them end to end, look what you get now. You get a sigma bond. That's different to a pi bond. The pi bond, if you look at it, is the joining of both lobes, tops and bottoms, to form one bond. Sigma is like an end-to-end -end joining, be like that. There's a sigma bond right there. Hopefully you can see the difference between those two. All right, let me do a, another example. And the example I'm going to choose is CH3OH. So I draw my Lewis dot, Lewis dot structure first. I've got a C with three H's on it, and then an O and an H. So that one's all satisfied. Everything's got all the bonds it needs. So this is going to be SP3 because it's all single bonded. And this one's going to be SP3 because it's all single bonded as well. Now there are a couple of lone pairs on the oxygens as well. I'm not going to worry about them for the Lewis dot structure, but we'll definitely see them when we go ahead and do the diagram. So looking at the SP3 template, which again we can get off this table up here, an SP3 template looks like this. And that would be four SP3 orbitals. Then we've got an oxygen. And that's going to have four SP3s as well. Now with carbon, we've got four valence electrons. So I put one in, one in each orbital. Oxygen has six, so I'll go one, two, three, four. And I've got two more to put in. I can't put any in here because that would be too many for that bond. If it's already got two electrons. So I can choose any of these three to put those two electrons into. So I'll put the one here and one here. And notice that uh, we're always trying to have different directions on these electrons. We're going to have one up and one down in every place where there's going to be two electrons in the same orbital. Alright, so the last thing we have to do is put on some hydrogens. They're all going to be 1s's. Uh, And then we will put in some bond types, and these are all sigma bonds. There are no instances where we have two parallel p orbitals trying to bond. The only time you get a pi bond is when you've got two pure p orbitals. 
we don't have any of that going on here so that would be the completed diagram for CH3OH the last one I'd like to do is HCN So this is HCN here, so HC, and we know HC will be connected to VN. Now since the carbon short two bonds and nitrogen short two bonds, then you can see we're going to end up getting a, a triple bond in between the carbon and the nitrogen. So that means that we're talking about SP hybrids on each of these. So we look at an SP hybrid, here's what we're going to see. We're going to see two SP hybrid orbitals. And then we're also going to see a p orbital and another p orbital. Now these p orbitals are 90 degrees apart. This p orbital kind of comes in and out of the screen. The nitrogen is going to be the same, sp, sp, and we get a p and another p. And we put our valence electrons in. We'll put one in here and one in here. Just remember these are two separate sp orbitals, so they are due each, each due one electron. This is a p orbital, and that's a p orbital. And remember the p orbitals are both top and bottom, so one electron is covering both of these lobes and one electron for both of these. We're going to do the same over here in the nitrogen. That needs five. One, two, three, four. And the fifth one needs to go in the sp hybrid orbital. It's the only place it can go. It can't go in the p because this is going to bond. It can't go in this p. It's going to bond. It can't go here because there's already two electrons in that bond. The only place it can go is in the sp hybrid over here. We'll put our hydrogen on over here. That's going to be a 1s. And then we can put in our bond types. So we're going to have two pi bonds one for this set of p orbitals, the ones that are in the plane of the screen, and then we're going to have another pi bond, and that's between this p orbital and this p orbital here, and that's why I've joined those together. So just remember with a pi bond, when you mark it, you do that and that on top and bottom, and then you mark it once on the top, because that entire thing is a pi bond. I don't have to, it's actually wrong for me to mark it pi and pi on the bottom. It has to be pi on top. And then we just have lines here showing how they join together. Alright, so that completes the HCN.